this style of guitar playing, it's, uh, it's one of our cultures too in online music, you know, besides hula and, and the way we live, but music is, is a, it's a therapy thing, and music by playing our guitar, you know, you just ease your body out when you grab your guitar and perform. Cyril is one of the great improvisers, and he just has his own feeling. He's absolutely the all-time, in my opinion, greatest player in D major tuning and in the C major tuning. Because every island, there's, there's one good player, you know, and they have their own special tuning, you know. Keola Beamer, his family is very popular. What style? Uh, for me, that's his own style. He, he, he had that full kind of thing. Led's an inspiration to me musically, but he's also an inspiration as to how much he enjoys playing. In the old days, it was a, a secret to each family, so that's why the music wasn't put out in the world, you know, so it was always held back. The only time you could hear the, the music is that um, when you go to the, um, um, the luau's parties like that, and then that's, when, that's the only time you could hear the slaki. Because, because the, um, the, when I was growing up, they never did uh, show their tunings, everybody used to hide their tunings. So each family had their own style of playing and tunings. Well, be my own. It's more like the, um, well, well, he liked, you know, the Spanish or, or um, well, I, I could hear some Spanish um, influence or Mexican style. What I love about this next piece is it combines the rhythmic motifs of the Spanish who introduced the guitar to Hawaii with our own kiho alu, our own Hawaiian slack key guitar. It's called Po Mahina. I'd like to look at the Hawaiian slack key guitar technique and kind of expand it in, in my life. I mean, I've always believed that it, it belonged 
on a concert stage somewhere, which is interesting because it's really a grassroots kind of thing. You know, when I was a young man, it was very difficult to learn how to play Hawaiian slack key guitar. There was um, a few resources. All the tunings were top secret. And it was really, really difficult to get anywhere because you, you, weren't, you weren't hearing it played in any of the clubs and, and you weren't finding people that were willing to talk about it or teach you how to tune your guitar. So it's really hard. This was the sort of paradigm of the Hawaiian slack key guitar for many years. And, and the reason was that Hawaiians had lost so much in their lives. They lost their religious system. They lost their lands. They felt kind of um, adrift in the world. And they began to realize that each time they shared something, it ended up disappearing. So the things that they really loved started going underground. The chant, the hula, the certain forms of, of music, including kihualu, Hawaiian slack key guitar. And that was the way it stayed for, for quite a while. And one day, the paradigm began to shift when, when, when we as a culture realized that we were losing this beautiful type of music and it was dying. And when people sort of began to understand that, I think they began to sort of figure out that we had to hold the things we love with an open hand. You know, we had to begin sharing them again. And so it's like magic. All of a sudden, that whole attitude changed. We, you know, we didn't sit down and have a meeting. <laughs> you know, it just, uh, culturally, it just changed. And, and pretty soon, kids were learning about the tunings from Uncle So-and-So. And, and it was just loosening, you know. Now, thanks to that, that change, it's been a lot easier for the younger students and, and the rest of us to kind of get a clue. Hendy Henny is one that was written in probably the time of my grandparents and Keolis. And it's really true. It has in it all those important things in life. Um, love, not just any old kind of love, but the kind that really makes the body tingle, like electricity that it says in the song. And of course, laughter, Hendy Hendy Kowaka. And best of all, and really a lot of Hawaiians understand this, is food. It's, it's the so usual thing for you and I. So typical Hawaiian music. You sing about the beauty of the earth, and, the, and then there's the food. <laughs> it all fits. It all fits. <laughs> yeah. Hende hende kubu. It's a wonderful thing to, to play music, you know, it's the idea that you can create something from nothing. And at first you don't sort of realize that that's what's happening. And then when you do, it's pretty, um, it's a very positive thing in, in a young person's life, you know. You can sort of feel some wonderful things with, with music when you're, when you're trying to write or stumbling along or anything. Just kind of making a connection with yourself. I was fortunate to be raised in a very beautiful place on the big island, the island of Hawaii. A uh, beautiful little town called Waimea on the slopes of Mauna Kea. My grandfather had a ranch, a Hawaiian homestead ranch, right on the slopes of Mauna Kea. And every morning we'd look through the picture window and drink our cocoa. And we'd see that beautiful mountain and watch as the mist would come and the clouds would go by. And it seemed like every moment the mountain was so alive. So I'd like to share with you my song about those days called The Beauty of Mauna Kea. Thanks.
My friend and I would sometimes roam the trails of Monica, and in the evening we come home to see her standing there. The moon's around her when she. The clouds stand beside her when she leaves, and I could be forgotten, and a thousand miles away, still I would recall the beauty. Of Monica. Now to a hill and she will be with you if you love. The sun spreads its walls across her face, and I could be forgotten, and a thousand miles away, still. 